Let's turn our Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 9, John chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 4 and 5, John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. The title of the message is, Work for the Night is Coming. Work for the Night is Coming. Work for the Night is Coming. John chapter 9. Verses 4 and 5. The Bible says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Brother Kelvin, can you please pray for the message? Lord, I just pray at this moment that you will fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Give him the wisdom, authority, and freedom, liberty to preach your word directly to our hearts, Lord. Yes. And Lord, give us the wisdom, uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit to understand these words. And Lord, I just pray for the listeners online that uh, whoever is listening who is not saved today, Lord, I pray that now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation for them. And they turn around and turn towards you, uh, repent and get saved today, Lord. And for those of us here, Lord, I pray that you help us to learn and take something with us uh, home today and apply to our lives. Uh, please protect us from devil's attack. Um, thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Work for the night is coming. Some people love to work. Some people don't like to work. You don't like to work, you're lazy. Amen. You're a lazy bum. Yeah. When kids don't want to study, they don't want to work. They're lazy. As Christians, one thing that characterizes backslidden, characterizes no good Christians, there are people who does not want to work. If you don't want to work, you can't be a good Christian. So we have to get the doctrinal stuff out of the way right away. When we look at you know, our verses today, John chapter 9, verse 4 and 5, as if you were to use the daylight time period from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., it is a picture of the church where a Christian can work. The night cometh when? When the great tribulation comes. You are not going to work during great tribulation. I'll tell you that if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you could if you reject him as your Lord and Savior. You have a choice. You know, that's why Dr. Ruckman has like a pamphlet on how to get saved during Great Tribulation. And those are people who's left over, right? And we know when the rapture happens, because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, so there'll be a bunch of blood down here. It will be a, they call it bloodbath, right? Our body will turn into a Christ-like body supernatural body, glorified body, will be gone. But until that day, we have to work. Because the Bible says, you know, the night cometh when no man can work. When that day comes, you and I will just have a bunch of regrets and, you know, what ifs, right? You know, what's the worst thing that a human being could feel? I could have done more. I could have done more. I could have done more. Right. It starts from the early ages when the kids, they had all the time in the world to study for an exam. And they just procrastinate. They do everything else except study and try to cram things in the night before. And they still do OK, right? They get like 85%. They get a B. And that determined their final grade, though. If they have gotten at least 90, they would have gotten an A for the whole semester. But because they fooled around, they came up with B plus or A minus, whatever the grade system is out there right now. And you look at your transcript, like, oh, man, I could have gotten A. Only if I studied, I worked at it just a little bit more. Right. What if at the admissions, they're like, you know, you could have been accepted, but that B cost you. Right? And you just kind of be regretting. As Christians, you know, we have opportunity to get right. Every single day, 
That's the grace of God, blessing of God, mercies of God. It's just that you and I, we just don't do well in our tests when it comes to spiritual things. Literally speaking, if you have to work and work and work and work to get good grace, then you have to work and work and work and work to get good grades. There are no shortcuts in Christian life. You're not going to gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the Bible by sleeping on it, right? I mean, it's funny. Maybe some of you guys have done it. I don't think I remember I've done it. Before the test, you put a textbook you know, under your pillow so that you could have you know, more knowledge you know, transferred to your brain, right? <laughs> I don't think it ever worked for anybody. It will never work for anybody. It did not work. Yeah, see, we have a you know, testimony from a brother here, <laughs> right? It's not going to work. Amen. You have to work at it. You have to open the book, and then you have to start reading and studying. Even at work, your own work, right, if you do work, you have to work. Right? Amen. Can you imagine if you're like a small business owner, you're just sitting there, just clicking at the computer, you know, lollygagging, playing games, and you're like, where's my money? Right? How come people aren't calling me? Right? Yeah. Because you're not doing anything. Right. You have to work. Amen. You know, at home, you have to work. Right. You can't be a good husband and a good wife and good child or children if you don't work at it. You know, you know, brother Nathan, sister Nicolene, they got married, right? Congrats to them. Yes. Man, those honeymoon stages don't last forever, oh, right? You're going to start seeing the true self of each other if they haven't already. I feel like with Nathan, probably she saw it already, but, you know. Wait for it. It is coming. So you have to work, yeah. and you have to work, and you have to work. So you have to work at relationship. You have to work at your work, at school, at home. So work is something as tomorrow is Labor Day, we have to labor, and we have to labor. Yes. You know, as much as you and I want to just relax and, you know, sit on your couch and watch TV, you know, eating your cookies all the time, that's not an ideal Christian life. Amen. You get your rest, eternal rest, when the rapture comes, yes. right? Amen. Until then, you and I have to work and work and work. Yeah, and as a Christian, you have to understand that. Whenever laziness comes your way, you know, whenever slothfulness comes your way, you have to remind yourself, you know what? I'm not here to lollygag. I'm here to actually work and work and work. Because this day and age, people are so entitled, you know, they think that you don't have to work just to, you know, survive. I mean, that's what, unfortunately, that's why homelessness you know, population is increasing because people don't want to work. I feel really bad for especially veterans with PTSD, people with mental issues, right? But some of them are just there because they don't want to work. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to do anything. They just want government or some prof, I mean, organization to come and just help them. It doesn't work like that. But unfortunately, that's kind of how it's working in California. Yes. I mean, I read some articles where in Santa Monica, like the new capital of homelessness, and one yes. of the worst cities out there now, they were trying to build this building in a lot where like each, if I'm not mistaken, like each room will cost like 150000 yes. or more. But real estate over there is super expensive. So I think, I think it probably would have gone for like a million bucks. And we have places where they're building for this homeless population where normal middle class people are struggling to make their ends meet. And they're working super hard. But they are getting all inclusive. Yeah. Like a super luxurious condo. But this society is working backwards. But however, as a Christian, don't compare yourself to what the world is going around. Right. You just have to work hard. Yes. You work hard for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. No if and buts about it. You know. So we, we go on to our first point. 
you have to work with willingness. You have to work with willingness. God does not like forceful things to happen. That's why you and I have free will to choose. You and I have free will to accept Christ or not. And I feel bad for brethren who does not have local churches around the world, right? There are circumstances. If you, you already, you know, started your family there and then you know, you're in a different country, especially we have listeners, whether you're from Germany, you know, Indonesia, anywhere out in the world, even the different parts of the states, right? You know, Wisconsin's of the world, I mean, even some Bible Belt areas, right? But gives you no excuse. You have to work. You are that missionary in that part of your world, right? You don't have to suddenly tell yourself, Lord, please, I want to be a missionary, right? Lord's like, where do you live, right? Do you have diverse group of people, people of different ethnicity, yes. people of different nationality? Go witness to them. Let's see how far it goes. It's like L.A., you know, Pastor Kim was talking about it, you know, 95 nations minimum, they're spread out everywhere. And like, I want to be a missionary to Philippines. How come Lord's giving me no opportunity? Okay, go to Cerritos, right? Go to different parts. There's so many people there of, you know, Filipino origin. Start witnessing to them. Like, oh, I want to be a missionary to Africa, right? There's like a Ethiopian, you know, town in L.A. Yeah. Go over there. Start somewhere. Right. Well, I want to be a missionary to blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you're a missionary to China, I mean, we have so many, you know, towns here. We have a town called Chinatown, right? Yes. Go work over there, right? Yeah. Well, I want to be a witness to, you know, Vietnamese folks, right? Yes. Westminster Garden Grove. They're everywhere. Yeah. I want to be a missionary to Korea. Go to Korea town, right? You know? So there are opportunities here, but are you willing to work? That's a problem, right. right? Going on a deputation, trying to, you know, build funding, living at a foreign country is hard. Yes. Ask the missionaries. But before you even get to that point, you gotta do work here yeah. in your local city, local church. Do something about it. And you're like, oh, I think I'm called to do something for the Lord. And do it. Why are you always just praying about it and don't do anything? Right. Sometimes Christians, they're just, I, I mean, you know, don't take it out of context. Prayer is very important. But all they do is pray. There's no balance. You don't go out there and do anything. Amen. I really love that soul, you know, from... I don't know, let's pick a country. I really love that soul from Georgia. Not the state Georgia, okay, people? Georgia in Europe. I love that soul, you know. And then, you know, he lives in a town of many Georgian people. And then the Lord's giving you every opportunity to go over there. You're actually there sometimes to eat dinner, right, to have some fun but you have no willingness to do any of the work. Right. Uh, I don't have to do it. Someone else can do it. And there's so-and-so brother there. There's so-and-so sister there. You know, we got some preachers over there. They could do it. But Lord's like, why not you? Yeah. Right? What are you lacking as a Christian? Tell me. What are you lacking? Nothing. Can you speak? Yes. Check mark. 100% you're done. You're qualified. Right? Amen. What else do you need? Yeah. Right? right? If you can't talk and if you can speak, that's only, to me, prerequisite you need. Right? Yeah. Qualification. Now, you just got to put that to willingness. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. I say that every moment when you could do some work for the Lord, you got to do it. Because night may come to you any moment. You and I have no guarantee. Do you know when you're going to die? No. Everybody wants to know. But nobody knows, right? 
then you have to work with willingness all the time. Colossians 3.23, you know, it's one of our favorite verses. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. You have to work, work willingly. And whatever you do, you're doing it to the Lord, not unto man, right? When you are being a good husband to your wife, you're doing it as unto the Lord. When you're being a good wife to your husband, you're doing it as unto the Lord. As a children, when you're obeying your parents, you're doing it as unto the Lord and not unto man. That has to like really stick to your brain. And when you're at work, you might have a horrible boss, right? Yeah. That is a tough situation to be. But you have to do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Amen. Then you could continue. Then you could actually do it. Do your best for the Lord, as they say, yes. when you are actually doing it for the Lord. Because if I have a horrible boss and I'm doing it as if I'm doing it unto a man, man, I'm gonna, I, I don't want to put my heart into it. Right. I'll probably just want to do my minimum, right? Yeah. I don't like you. You don't like me, right? So I'll just give you a minimum work. But even though I don't like him, but... I ask if I'm doing it for the Lord, I'm going to do my best. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to look past the human person. That's why you could be a loving husband because you're moving past at what you're looking at your infirmities of your wife. Yeah. You're doing it as unto the Lord. The Lord had a lot of compassion on you and me. Oh, yes. and he died for us. Yes. Man, I even I preach it on it. I mean, you have to be like that. Part of willingness to do work is that show great compassion, and you have to work at it. It doesn't come to you right away. Don't think that suddenly, I heard this message, I read a verse. Now, I could be the most compassionate person in the world. You're a fool who sleeps on the Bible and think that all the knowledge has come to your head. Yeah. You have to start working on it, right? There are points in any relationship where you just want to explode, right? As a husband, as a wife, and even as children. Because parents are, you know, goofballs sometimes, right? Yeah. Or they're not good. Then you have to work compassion at it. Yes. I mean, if Lord didn't work to show compassion to us, I mean, that's him. But he was 100% human being just like us. He went through all the trials and temptations and tribulations, then you and I wouldn't be here, right? If he had like a anger issues like some of the men or women, this world would have been annihilated a long time ago, <laughs> right? You know, it would have been, we wouldn't be here. It's just gone. You have to Work with willingness. You know, willingness is so important. It's got to come from your heart. When it comes from your heart, when you're doing work for the Lord, it's just going to last. It's just going to build up. So at this point, I do have to go over a point because there are a lot of people who work at their salvation. But we don't work at our salvation. Amen. We work out our salvation. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. It's very important. You and I don't work to get salvation. We work because we want to work out our own salvation. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Let's look at verse 11. You know, we all love this verse, right? Let's start from verse 9. This is the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee. Every knee. I mean, we're talking about every knee. It's got to be Newsom's of the world. It's going to be Biden, Kamala, Trump's, every knee. Of things in heaven, I think about it, yeah. devil has to bow down his knees, yeah. right? And things in earth and things under the earth, 
and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. When every knee is going to confess that Jesus is Lord, every single person who rejected Jesus Christ, every single person who said no to Jesus Christ, every person who rejected him and who cursed at him, who, I mean, then horrible things to his name, they're going to have to confess. There's no choice. Amen. They're, you know, can you imagine their faces, right? Some of them will be like cry. Some of them will be so defiant, right? Yeah. But you're going to get your knees down yeah. and confess that Jesus is Lord. Now it's coming out to verse 12, you know, the main point. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So do something when people are not watching, right? That's key. I really don't like it if you only do it because people are watching. I hate myself when I'm only doing it because people are watching. That's not how you ought to live your Christian life. You do it no matter what, right? But there's always someone watching, though. Just remember that, right? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Man, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So what does that mean? You have to work. Work. You have to work out your own salvation. Not with reverence and respect. No, with fear and trembling. The fear of the Lord. You know what fear of the Lord is? You have to be scared. Terrified. Right? You have to work out your salvation. Christian, you and me, does not work to get saved. So we, let's get that out of the way. Amen. We don't work to get saved. Neither do we work to stay saved, Amen. right? Amen. We're not Armenians. We're not work by salvation. We work because we are saved. Amen. That's it. Yeah. Because you and I are saved, that's why we work, right? Yeah. And you cannot work out. Think about it. Look at the, sometimes it amazes you, Bible correctors, Bible rejectors, people who doesn't really read as what the Bible says, they don't read, and they don't want to accept it. Bible says work out your own salvation. Only way you could work out something is if something's worked in. Because you have something inside, so you could work it out. And who's inside of you? Jesus Christ, God, Lord himself is inside of you, so you could work out your salvation. God is working through you. Lord is working through you to bring forth fruit in your life for his glory. That's working out your own salvation because you're saved. You're not, again, working to get saved. You're not working to stay saved. You're working because you're saved. Because someone inside, Lord Jesus Christ, wants to work through you. And then since you have Christ as your Lord and Savior inside, now you have to work it out. Then in order to do that, you have to do it with willingness. How many, we have parents here. When you force your child to do it and they hate doing it, next time if they don't have to do it, they'll never do it. Right? You tell them to clean up your room. They hate it. But because you're you know, holding your belt or, you know, rod, they start doing it. They're doing it very slowly, though, but they're doing it, right? And then next time, it's a, you know, pig house again. Yeah. <laughs> However, when they start doing it willingly, suddenly it becomes part of them. You know, you know what? You know, my, lo- my, my, my dad, my mom, they love it when my room is clean. You know, I want to do it willingly. I want to work at it. You know, I want to please them. As Christians, we're like that, you know, disobedient child. When the Lord said to clean up your room, you're like, when? (laughs) When he tells you that's the right time to do it. There's no if and buts, you know, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, I'll do it one month from now, you know, when my project's done, when we're finished with this and that. No. People who work with willingness, they do it right away. Yes. That's what is missing in our life. Yes. Right? When you and I have to read the Bible, we don't do it right away. 
We always try to find excuses to do it later. Right. When it's time to pray, we do it like later, later, later. Yes. And then we sometimes forget, so we have to wake up next day to do it. Right? right? Or when it's time to witness, you know, you're like, oh, I'm too scared today, Lord. You know, I, I'm not really spiritually good place. He, it doesn't matter. He said, do it. You just do it. Yeah. But you're like, no, 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 no. Not right now, you know. When it's time to go to church, sometimes they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Not right now, Lord. You know? I have a set time when I leave from my home. And I get to church like one minute before church starts. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin that routine, you know. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, if it were for you to go to a ball game, and you love that ball game, you love that sport, you love that team, man, you'll be there. You try to do tailgate, right? Yeah. And you're like riding in the line so that you could go to a batting practice, catch some balls or, you know, whatnot. But when it comes to church time, Come man, your willingness is missing. Yes. That's what it is. I mean, as much as, you know, I know you have a lot of things going on in your life. You raise your children, you have work, you labor, and all that stuff. But compare that to what Lord did. Lord shed his precious blood. Lord, I mean, he, he gave up everything for you. And he was never late. And you're like, whoa, you know, I want to be like Lord Jesus Christ. Then stop being late. Amen. Stop being late at church, stop being at home, late at home, stop being late for everything. Yes. I preached on it a while back. Don't be an emergency Christian. Amen. Your life shouldn't be all about emergency. Oh, man, I only have two hours to finish this project. You have one month to do it. Now you're trying to cram everything into a couple hours. And like, honey... Your wife tells you, can you do this? You know, we have two weeks to do it. And you're like, okay, I'll do it. On the last day, your wife asks you, did you do it? I'm working on it. You haven't even started. <laughs> and then you barely make it, and you're so proud of yourself. See? But she knows. She knows you've been a lazy bum, yeah. and you barely finished because she gave you, you know, Push to finish. And even children, same thing, right? As Christians, we need to have willingness. We need to work with willingness. And that means you do it right away. When Holy Spirit convicts you, you do it right away. When Holy Spirit convicts you, you change right away. Yes. Your life has to change. You can't just stay at an altar. You can't just stay at a prayer. Your actions have to start speaking. Yeah. I mean, there's reason why people say, you know, actions speak louder than words. Because many people are just words. Yes. You're just full of words. You're, you're only talk. And Christians are really good at it, especially Bible-believing Christians. Because you know so much deep doctrine. And then you have the perfect word of God. And you even are part of a local church, Bible-believing church, doing something for the Lord. So you're like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. You know, you have that sense of false pride, right? And you barely participate in certain things. Look at me. You know, I took some photos with my brethren. I was there. You know, I was there. Don't you see? You know, I'm doing for the Lord. Man, but that happens like only once or twice a year. And last time I checked, there's 52 weeks in a year, right? Person who work with willingness, they do it every single week. They do it every single day. Yes. And they do it right away. Yes. I mean, that is what whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord means. You do it all the time Amen. as if you're doing unto the Lord. Let's look at a couple of verses. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Again, you have to work with willingness. You have to. If you don't work with willingness, you're just going to become a backslidden, lazy Christian. And that's the last place you and I want to be. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Don't be lazy. 
I mean, look, yeah. Bible says don't be lazy. Amen. Because you're serving the Lord. If you want to serve the Lord, you can't be slothful in business. If you want to serve the Lord, you have to be fervent in spirit. If you want to serve the Lord, you have to work, 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 work. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's why there's a lot of similarities, analogies between, you know, sports and Bible as a soldier of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Honestly, team that works the hardest, they succeed the most, right? Yeah. Because at that point, you know, if people are at a professional level, a lot of them have about the same skills. What determines great teams from losing teams are the teams that just work harder than anybody else. Because whether you're playing defense, whether you're playing offense, it gets instilled in your body because you repeated it, that same motion, over and over and over and over. And we have some basketball fans here. We have a tall guy sitting back there, right? You know, you shoot basketball like 10,000 times each day. You could shoot it even with your eyes closed. If you see some professional players, you know, like hand is on their face. They can't see the rim. Yeah. They still make the shots over and over and over because it's part of their body, right? And as Christians, you and I have to work to the point. It's like a second nature, Amen. but it's from willingness. Man. When sin comes your way, you have that 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 instilled in you, and you're practicing it. So temptation comes. It becomes 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. Amen. You just abstain from it. When it's time to pray, just like Nehemiah prayer, you just do it right away. Yeah. That's like first thing, right? When someone needs help, you just do it right away. Because that's as if you're doing it unto the Lord and not unto man, Amen. right? We have too many spoiled Christians out there this day and age. Yes. Just like the spoiled children out there. All you want to do is receive. Right. You never want to do anything. You know, it's the worst thing to see a child sitting at a table, and they're okay of the age, right? We're not talking about two-year-old or one-year-old, right? Just a little baby. We're talking about it like a kid now, right? Like elementary school, you know, junior high. Even high school, they're just sitting at their table and just waiting for mom to bring the food for them. Waiting for dad to food, bring the food for them. Like you're at a restaurant, you're like at a, at a buffet, you know, even at our church. Like, where's my food, mommy? I'm getting too hungry. Dad, I told you not to bring this, right? What a spoil, rotten children, right? They have zero sense, they have no common sense, and they have zero percent desire to actually work. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry to children, but I'm sorry, parents, you brought it on your children. Yeah. They're like that because of you. Unless the kid is like a purely evil, many children are just byproduct of their parents. Because you don't want to work and you don't want to instill this Christian value of doing everything as unto the Lord, willingly, they're going to follow exactly what you do. If husbands only do things because wife is screaming at them, then kids are only going to do it when their mom is screaming at them. They're not going to do it willingly. Yeah. If wives are doing something be and only because husband is hurt and husband is really angry for the right reasons, then children is going to do the same thing. Yeah. Only when you are super angry and when you, know, when you get hurt, they do it. You know, Christians, you shouldn't move just because people get hurt. Right. Right. You should do it when they're actually healthy, when they're happy and joyous. Yes. Amen. You know, it's too many Christians, you only move. Your heart only moves when people are hurt. Do you have to really love your wife when she's hurt? What, if, what, if, what about during good days? What about joyful days, right? Yeah. If you are like that, you wouldn't go to that stage. Yeah. You'd be very rare. I mean, Christians are just, I mean, you and I are just fleshly beings. We have old men, 
And since we continue to serve our old man, you know, we're really willing to serve our old man yeah. right. instead of new man. We don't work with willingness to the Lord. We work with willingness to the flesh, the world, and the devil. That's why our result is completely opposite than the, what we just read. We're slothful in business, especially spiritual things, and we don't serve the Lord. People say, Bible is too complicated. It's not. You either work for the Lord and serve the Lord, or you don't work for the Lord and you're a lazy Christian. Simple as that. And secondly, you, know, you have to work with willingness, and you have to work with watchfulness. You have to watch. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. That's why you have to be wise about things. You know? If there's a fire in front of me and I have to work, it's behind the fire. Am I going to just go through the fire and get hurt and burn? No, I have to be wise about it. I have to go around the fire. But certain Christians, they have right willingness to work, but they're not wise about it. Right? A lot of times that happens when you become proud. You think that I'm doing something for the Lord. I'm so happy. But instead of giving all the glory to God, you start giving glory to yourself. Yeah. Oh, I need some, I need some applause. Hey, 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 I just did something during street preaching. Give me some good look. At least give me a smile, right? At least nod your head, you know? Or give me, give me this or something, you know? Give me thumbs up. Man, and that gets into you. Yeah. You're not being watchful anymore. You're letting the devil have, start having victories in your life. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You have to be sober, sober and vigilant. You have to watch, right? When you're wa- working, you have to know where you are. When the time is. Think about it. You really love the Lord. You want to serve the Lord. But you have a family to take care of, right? So Monday to Friday, instead of working and providing for your family, I'm going to go out there and witness. Those 40 hours that I need to work, I'm going to actually go out there and just witness. That's being irresponsible. That's being dumb. That's being unwise. Unless you're called to do it and the Lord has provided you to do it, you have to be faithful and do your work where you're supposed to do it. Yes. And that's at work. I mean, I'll be a fool a little bit, right? I, mean, I have a full-time job. I work. Just because of this, the role that the Lord has given me, I might not just say, you know what? I'll throw it in your face, you know, to the boss, blah, blah, blah and then just don't work at all? No. Lord, put me in a place where I work full time and I do the ministry. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Because Lord said, you could do it. Amen. He has given me strength and all the opportunities to do it. Amen. So you have to do the same. You work. Do your best at work. Be watchful. And but you have to understand that you have to do work for the Lord as well. So you got to have balance, right? You need to have a balance. If you do more work at work and less work for the Lord, then you are unbalanced. And you know what it is. Don't ask me then how many hours. No, you know, okay? Do your work full time, 40 hours or something, right? It's always funny when Dr. Ruckman shared this story. You know, somebody came from Germany. How many hours do you guys work? 40 hours. Oh, part-time, huh? <laughs> they work a lot. I mean, don't tell that the Asian countries. I mean, they work a lot too, right? So you have to be watchful. You have to be balanced, right? Do your best wherever you are. And you have to take care of your family. Do it. You have to do it. Do it. But don't neglect things of the Lord, vice versa. Don't neglect 
things that you're supposed to be doing well as a mom, as a dad, father, mother, children, whatever roles and tasks that you have, you have to do your best. Last thing I want to see is that you come out to every street preaching, you witness to souls, you participate in ministry, but at work you're the most or the worst worker out there. You're always late to work, you don't do any assignment, and you always fight with your bosses and colleagues and stuff. Man, that's not a good testimony. Right. That's not working with watchfulness. No. You're being a very bad testimony. Right. I mean, you are supposed to be the light to this lost world out there. Yeah. Then if you are watchful, you're not only going to be watchful at church. You're going to be watchful everywhere else. And you're going to do your best as if you're doing it unto the Lord. So you should be the best worker that you can be at work. I mean, if I were to talk to one of your colleagues, your name should be associated with diligence. Your name should be associated with faithfulness. Your name should be associated with someone who they can count on, accountable, responsible. Amen. But the person that I know you at church who's been faithful to everything in church ministry, but outside of church, man, you're known as lazy, unresponsible, irresponsible, not accountable, always full of conflicts, never miss the deadline, you know, just working to get their paycheck only. Man, that's bad. Yeah. That's not a good testimony. That's not really working for the Lord. You have to be balanced in both things. That's how you will have opportunity to lead those people to the Lord. With that good testimony that you have, as you work with watchfulness, then they're going to see the difference. Man, I want to have what she has. I know she's a Christian. Man, I, I know she goes to a lot of church stuff. I don't even know how she does it. But she's so good at still everything she does at work. You know, they're like, you know what, I'm, I, I, I want to know. That's how the Lord should be opening the door in your life. Instead of when you try to witness to him, they're like, hey. In their mind, they're trying to be polite to you. Hey, I mean, you trying to tell me to become a Christian when you don't do anything right? You're the laziest person I know. You're telling me to become a Christian? You're telling me to be you? I don't want to be you. You're the last person I want to be. But unfortunately, too many Christians, too many Bible-believing Christians who spend all their effort, who spend all their strength, who spend all their might in so-called church ministry, but they neglect other parts of their life. You can't. You have to be balanced. You have to be faithful in church stuff. You have to be faithful in everything that Lord has Giving you to be faithful and provide to your family and everybody and children, obeying and everything, you have to do it. You have to do it. That's how you're going to grow as a Christian. We don't want unbalanced growth. Can you imagine if my right arm is like two feet longer than my left <laughs> arm, right? You know, <laughs> and my right leg is like one feet shorter than, and then my left feet is two feet longer. That's how Christians are walking. They're walking like a monster. Yeah. At one part, they're really good. The other part, they're horrible. Last thing I want to see is uh, if a monster comes to me and they're, they have a gospel track and they're trying to give it to me, I'm going to run away. You know? I mean, I'm going to run away from you. I don't want to get hurt. Yeah. But that's how a lot of Christians are. You don't realize it because you neglect your testimony, because you're not balanced, and you're not being watchful. You're out of place. So you have to put yourself back into place. How are you going to do it? You have to realize all the unbalanced life that you've been living, and you have to get right with the Lord. That's between you and the Lord, right? And the Bible has the answers. And when you pray, and Lord's going to give you that things that you have to pray about, Holy Spirit will convict you. Get right with the Lord. Amen. Then with 
willingness to work, with watchfulness when it comes to work, man, John 9, 4, you're going to do it with joy. Work for the night is coming, right? I'm going to be joyful working during this daytime until yeah. the nighttime comes. You know, when the hymn writer wrote about work for the night is coming, she wrote it. Why? Because she had that joy of working for the Lord. Amen. You and I should have that joy of working for the Lord, but we have to do it the right way. And number one, right, you're doing it for the glory of God. Amen. You do it for Lord's glory, and you just want to be used as a tool, yes. right? Yes. Don't give any glory to yourself. Amen. I work, I work, I work for the Lord. Don't forget it. I work, I work, I work, I work for the Lord. In any work that you do here at church, in any work that you do outside of church, in any work that you do at home, you do it for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Then all these little petty things, all these, you know, unbalanced things in your life will balance out. The Lord has got to balance, right? Yeah. He doesn't want no confusion, yeah. right? You know, he wants balance. Then in order to do it, you have to work. And oh, how I want to be found as a right working Christian when the Lord comes back. And that is, the, that, is, that is my whole prayer, and that's how I want to be found. I don't know about you. You have to make your own decision. Let's pray. Dear Father, we need to work for the night is coming, Lord. And many times, our life has been unbalanced. We work and work in certain areas, but we are horrible testimony to the world, to our family, and to others in different areas. Help us to get right with you, Lord. Help us to work with willingness. Do as if, as if unto you, Lord, for everything. And also, help us to be watchful. Please. Don't let our pride get in the way. You deserve all the glory, Lord. We want to do every work for you and your own glory. And thank you that we don't have to work to get saved, Lord. Thank you for saving us from your, saving us from hell without works, Lord. I pray that you're blessed this day, be with everyone, and above all, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.